Hey everybody, it's Uncle Frankie here. I'm going to make some pressure cooker beans. So it's my charro beans recipe, which normally takes me half the day on a stove pot, but you can make it with this Instapot pressure cooker in a couple of hours tops. Uh, so first thing you want to do is you want to sort through the beans. So you can see the beans here. And you want to look for the ones that are all wrinkled and super dark and ugly looking. You kind of throw those away because they could be bitter and they'll make the soup taste bad. Uh, then the secret to removing the uh, unwanted gases is take the beans and soak them. So rinse them out a couple of times and then after you rinse them you put them on the stove and you heat up the water until it's warm. Not hot, just warm and then leave it alone for about an hour or two. And this again you stir it every now and then and it'll help remove the unwanted gases. Beans, I rinsed them twice Went ahead and filled it up with at least twice the amount of water as you see for the beans. You can kind of gauge it with your finger and like, okay, it's a medium. When it gets a little bit, a slightly warm, like a you know warm bath or something, um, that's a, that's about all you need. It doesn't have to be boiling. This is just kind of to soak the beans a little bit and get the unwanted gases out. So you can see I'm using the liner from the pressure cooker. Nothing wrong with that. And uh, just kind of leave it there. Okay, so this will take uh, anywhere between an hour or two hours or something like this. It's probably the most time-consuming part of this entire thing. It's kind of just, so like I said, I put it stirred every now and then. You'll see little bubbles popping up. Kind of see that it it's not like a nice bean smell. It's the other kind of smell that you're getting there. So it's good. We're going to drain that. Put uh, about four quarts of uh, clean water. So it'll be a little bit more than where it is right now. All right, so I got the water in the pressure cooker. And just to let you know, this is not going to be the final soup. This will be like the soup base. So I'm going to transfer this to a larger pot, and I'm going to add uh, more tomato sauce. I'll add, you know, cilantro, more spices if it needs it. I'll add a beer in there, you name it. Uh, so this is kind of just, just to get the beans cooked and to get the the pork meat fall off. So... We're going to put in some larger things. So here is again the pork uh, meat. I got the meat and some of the fatty parts. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. I didn't put too much fat, but you, know, you want some for flavor. I went ahead and chopped up really fine a, a onion or half an onion. And I got uh, just leftover tomatoes. You can put tomatoes or not put tomatoes up to you. I also have some diced tomatoes. So this is just a hard tomato I had. You know, the winter tomatoes are not so soft, not so tasty. But it's great filler for the soup. So I'm going to go ahead and put some um, chili that's come from a, from a can. You can also put fresh chili if you want to put fresh chili. I put a, a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a teaspoon of salt. And again, this is just to get the cooking going. You know, after you transfer to a larger pot, uh, you can taste it and add more salt, add, add more garlic, whatever you want to do. All right, I got all my ingredients in there. I got the bone in the bottom. Just gonna stir this up a little bit, not not heavy. Just you know, just kind of get the you know spices distributed nicely. Um, you know, when it, like I said, you know, you pretty much just go ahead and clean everything out of your fridge. I've even had some friends of mine who take leftover sausages, dice them up and throw them in there. You know, if you have some leftover uh, pork broth, you can do that too in case you don't have a ham bone, but. I'm telling you, you want that ham bone. It really, really brings it out. So it's quite full, you can see there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this lid. The pressure cooker. Plug this bad boy in. Make sure I'm here to this, it's sealed. Okay, good. Okay, so I got my pressure cooker closed up here. I'm gonna go ahead and I like to use this one here and 25 minutes high pressure uh, that's that's about right for me uh, officially the book some books say you only need 20 minutes some say you only need 15 uh, but you know we got a ham bone in there and we really want that meat to kind of fall off of that bone so we're gonna put it in there for 25 minutes come back in 25 minutes and we're gonna take a look at it maybe even give it a taste if the beans are, are nice and soft, we'll go ahead and move this to a bigger pot and we're gonna finish this off. 
If the beans are still hard, we'll seal it back up and give it another five minutes. All right. Sorry I denied you the ability to see me open it, but uh, you can see I have already started to pour some of it into a larger pot so I can finish it off on the stove. Here's the bone. See that? Look at that. It's like all the meat is falling off of it. See that just kind of crumbles off the bone there. Look at that. Okay, that's what you want. And the, uh, the beans are nice and soft. So sure enough, about 25 minutes at high pressure will do it. So you can see that even the bone separates there. So you can take that bone out so that nobody swallows it and dies and then they have to sue you. Um, okay. All right. So I'm going to put this on the stove. I'm going to add a beer and I'm going to add a can of tomato sauce. Stir it for a little while. Taste it. And then if I see need to add anything else. Finishing the finishing touches on the charro beans or borracho beans, however you want to call it. So I went ahead and, you know, of course, uh, you got to taste things. So I normally recommend to people that they go ahead and pour some into a little side dish. Don't stick your spoon in the pot. And then taste things. So I went ahead and added a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, about one tablespoon. I added about a teaspoon of ground cumin just to get the... That little, you know, that kind of a, I don't know what it is, like an earthy, smoky flavor. And it was kind of wimpy, so I threw some shots of Tabasco in there. And, of course, add a little bit more salt. And now, of course, the finishing touches, you can't have uh, charro beans without cilantro, right? And you can't have any of this stuff without cilantro. So, just kind of chop it up like this. And I usually stop when I get to the stem parts. Right about there. Well, that stuff we don't want. A little bit too many stems. All right, so just kind of chop it up nice and fine here. Don't cut your fingers. And then just throw in the pot, and then let this simmer in there for a little bit. I know cilantro is a one of those things. Some people like it, some people don't. Um, we in this house we love cilantro, but uh, you can skip this if you're not a cilantro person. Just gonna scrape it in there. And throw it in there. This you pretty pretty much put right at the end, so you can you don't want to ruin all those flavors that are in there. Just kind of get that in there and get the flavors going, and that's it. This is ready to serve. Now, I usually throw it on top of. Uh, you can if you want to have rice, put this on top of some rice. Make a Mexican version of rice and beans, or you can just uh, put a pile of cheese in there or eat it with quesadilla. Either way. Uh, I think you're going to love it. And I tell you what, this is the best thing to use one of those ham bones for. You can buy a ham for like a dollar a pound. So it's a bargain. You know, you, you make the ham for yourself. And then after you make the ham, you got uh, you make yourself a ham soup. And some beans in there. Look at that. Voila. Uncle Frankie's ham bone soup.